For the world you love, your will be done, let your will be done in me, for you and you alone, awake my soul, awake my soul and see. This evening the focus of our discussion is going to be on the topic of responsibility. Now, responsibility um, entails a lot of different, a lot of different things. I think, basically, probably, you could talk about responsibility in terms of expectations and answerability. If I am held responsible for something, that means that there's something that's expected of me, and that I will answer for how I handle those expectations. And so it goes with uh, responsibility. Now. We all have all kinds of responsibilities, you know. I, I have a responsibility as a husband, as a father, a grandfather, a friend, uh, a Christian, uh, a preacher and teacher, counselor, head of adult education, blah, blah, so it goes. I mean, we all have various responsibilities that uh, we carry out, and with those responsibilities, of course, entails expectations and answerability. But this evening I want us to focus our thoughts in particular on our responsibilities to each other as Christians because that's what these encounter groups are all about. Um, we've already spent months literally talking about one another passages and how we are to love one another and how that loving one another entails uh, bearing one another's burdens, encouraging one another, admonishing one another, forgiving each other, and so on. All that, I think, wrapped up in the fact that we have a responsibility to agape one another, in part, certainly, based on Jesus' command in John 13, 34, and 35, that we are to agape one another. And his declaration, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you agape one another. And so I've got a responsibility to agape you. And you've got a responsibility to agape me. And with that goes certain expectations and I believe ultimate answerability to our Lord. But there are two areas of responsibility within our family as, as, as the body of Christ that I want us to focus on for just a couple of minutes. Um, one of those is a kind of global responsibility and the other is an individual responsibility. Now when I'm talking about a global responsibility I'm talking about the fact that someone must be responsible for the health and the welfare of the body of Christ that meets in Fort Gibson. And in God's plan and in his design he gave us shepherds, elders, overseers to fulfill that role. We have six good men who shepherd the flock here. It is their responsibility to see that you're fed, that you're protected, that if you're struggling with something that they're there to to help you. Okay? Now, these six men, please understand, because sometimes I think people kind of misunderstand this. These six men are sheep, just like we are. Okay? They're not superhuman. They're not angels. They're not cherubim or anything like that. You know, they're human beings just like we are. Now, they're human beings that meet certain qualities or qualifications as far as spiritual development and growth goes, reflected in passages like 1 Timothy 3 and Titus chapter 1, um, they, are, they are men who are mature, who have proven themselves to be wise men, but still, they're just human beings. And that means, therefore, that while they have a responsibility to oversee the 300 and some odd of us who gather here on a Sunday, there is no way that one human being can do that. In fact, there's no way that six human beings can individually tend to um, 300 people 
every week. Can't be done. Their responsibility is to oversee your welfare and my welfare. It is to see to it that we are fed and that we are protected and that we are cared for. And so as they do their job, as they fulfill their responsibility as shepherds, they have to delegate in order to get all of that done. That means that they ask me to do some of the feeding as the preacher here. They have every right to do that. They feed as well, but they've given me a responsibility to feed. Uh, our young people need to be watched out for and, and helped and, and tended to, and they give bear at that responsibility. Um, we need to interact with each other and care for one another and draw closer to each other and strengthen each other. And, and Steve has come in to aid in that area. But all that goes back to these men fulfilling their responsibility to shepherd this flock. And so there's a, there's a global sense in which there's a responsibility to care for each other. And these six good men have shouldered that responsibility to see that that happens. But there's also, very importantly, an individual responsibility that each of us have. And that is that we are to watch out for one another, to love one another. Now, I would argue the same thing holds true with each of us individually that holds true with each man in the eldership. Um, is there anybody sitting there listening to this that can name every member in this church? Who, who knows every member in this church? And I'm sure the answer is no. Now, some of us may know a lot of the folks, but not necessarily everybody. I believe that our responsibility as individual Christians is to those we know. Not to those we don't know. And I'm not saying it's not important that we seek to know as many as we can, but the fact of the matter is um, that whether you know six people or 16 people or 60 people or 260 people, you have a responsibility and I have a responsibility to love those, to seek their highest good, to do what I can to encourage them and to admonish them and to pray for them and all the one another things that are involved in our relationship with each other. I have a responsibility to do that. And so you see, I don't have the right, I believe, to go, well, the elders need to take care of that if I know that a brother's struggling. I've got a responsibility to take care of that. Now, it may be that I need to go to the elders and share with the elders, listen, this brother's really struggling with this and I think you need to know this. Um, that's fine. But the bottom line is that if I see someone I know who's struggling with something or has a problem or needs to be encouraged, I've got a responsibility to do what I can to help them. Because you see, I may be the only one who knows. How many times have you heard about someone who was sick or someone who was struggling with something and you find out about it ex post facto? That is, you find out about it after it happened. You didn't know during the time that it was going on that these people were struggling. If you'd known, you would try to help, but you didn't know. But there were people who knew. And, and our responsibility, if we know, is to step in there and do something about it. I believe that is the expectation that God has of our relationship with each other as brothers and sisters. And there's going to be answerability for whether or not we fulfill those expectations. And so we need to take responsibility and relationships with each other very seriously. And again, I believe that God has provided ways in which we can be responsible for each other. Again, globally, with the elders, in a sense, watching over for the forest and certainly concerned about the individual trees, but you understand the analogy? But somebody needs to tend and oversee the forest. And then each of us as individuals looking out for the sheep about us that we know and that we have acquaintance with and, and, and love and doing what we can to help them. If we can create that kind of atmosphere, maintain that kind of atmosphere, this is going to be a very healthy body 
and we'll all be blessed because of it. And so this evening, as we talk about responsibility, and as we talk about how we can better be responsible for and to each other, may God bless us and help us to be better equipped to do that. Thank you. In our